This week we're going to talk about some insects that move into the plant and damage it internally, either the, the leaves, the twigs, terminal growth, uh, or maybe even the trunks. Also want to bring up the concept of injury through the ovipositor, the egg, egg uh, laying organ of, of insects. So the main things we're trying to get through this week are to recognize the type of injury known as leaf mining and the types of insects that develop as leaf miners, to become familiar with the insects that bore into and develop within the terminal growth of plants, uh, the, the edges, of the tips of branches, the top leader of a, of a pine, or, and, and those kinds of injuries. Also bring up this oviposition injury uh, where, where the damage is done by the ovipositor. And finally, start uh, in on bark beetles, uh, working, up, working with the, the bark beetles that are on conifers. So the first thing we want to cover will be leaf miners and needle miners. And these are going to be insects that develop within the leaf. They mine the leaf or the needle. Uh, so they uh, are usually quite small or fairly small and uh, will uh, uh, cause the, the leaf to be excavated out. And, and this is a kind of injury that's very easy to diagnose with a little bit of um, a little bit of effort, you just see if you can tease the, the leaf apart. And if you can, uh, that's been done by some leaf miner. And, and often, if you can't find the insect in it, uh, then uh, you might say the frass that they leave behind. So, so there are many kinds of things that might make a blotch on a leaf that have nothing to do with insects. It could be chemical injury. It could be uh, drought stress. It could be uh, uh, done by various kinds of fungi or bacteria. But None of them would allow you to tease the leaf apart uh, to show that it's been excavated internally. With those other injuries, the tissues would collapse rather than be tunneled. So the kinds of insects that develop as leaf miners and needle miners are pretty diverse. There's some sawflies in the order Hymenoptera, some kinds of caterpillars in the order Lepidoptera, a few leaf beetles and weevils in the order Coleoptera, and some leaf mining flies in the order Diptera. And leaf miners are often described by the type of mine that they produce. Uh, the three main groups would be a serpentine mine, a blotch mine, and a special kind of blotch mine that's called a tentiform mine. So starting with the serpentine mines, these would be ones that kind of meander uh, through the, the, the leaf. They uh, are quite small uh, at the point they start where the egg is laid and they will gradually increase in diameter and then ultimately the insect will either pupate at the end or drop to the ground from the end of the mine and pupate in the soil. The blotch leaf mines uh, are produced by various kinds of saw flies, leaf miner flies, and a few kinds of beetles and caterpillars. Pretty much every group might have some that produce blotch leaf mine. And there's a special kind of blotch leaf mine, the teniform leaf mine, where it kind of puckers up afterwards. And these are produced by a group of moths. Often the most commonly seen blotch leaf miners are some kind of sawfly. Uh, and the one that I have the best pictures of, because they're very common in my own backyard, is, is elm leaf miner. And this makes leaf mines on, on elm, several kinds of elm. The adults are out very early, uh, shortly after the new leaves are, are out, uh, the adults will be out, they emerge, uh, the, you'll see them occasionally mating, uh, they are a kind of wasp, but a non-stinging wasp, and then the females will then get around to the business of laying eggs. In this case, the eggs are generally inserted near the main vein and one of the larger side veins on the upper leaf surface, so these would be small puncture wounds that are produced incidental to laying eggs by this species. And then the egg hatches, and then the young develops uh, in the area around that laid egg. And the leaf mines will be quite small for the first few days, but as the insect grows, the leaf mines expand. They continue to expand. So in the picture on the left, I think you can see uh, there's a, a series of leaf mines. Each one of them has a as an individual leaf miner in that in the, in the dark material. That's all the frass. That's the excrement they produce. In the lower right is, is a leaf that has been thoroughly uh, mined. Uh, almost all the green tissue has been removed. Uh, so they've been working even across the, the larger, larger veins. So this is a blotch leaf mine produced by a type of soft fly. In this case, the elm leaf miner. 
another species that historically has been pretty important in some areas of the US is the birch leaf miner, makes a blotch leaf mine on, on several kinds of birch. Uh, this is a, an insect that, uh, again, has the same kind of pattern. The adults will be out early. Eggs are also laid uh, kind of right near the, the junction of the main veins. The eggs hatch and you get a, a, a larva that then starts to feed, producing a blotch leaf mine. In the picture on the lower right, there's so many larvae and so much, uh, so much injury that essentially the whole uh, leaf has been involved in, in leaf mining. This insect, by the way, is in general much less common now than it was 20, 30 years ago because some natural enemies have become established in many areas of North America that now control this insect, which is native to Europe. It's a non-native species. Hawthorn has a leaf miner too. Again, a blotch leaf miner on certain kinds of hawthorn, not all of them, but but uh, some some cultivars. And alder uh, leaf miner, European alder leaf miner, another non-native species uh, produces a blotch leaf mine in various kinds of alder. Blotch leaf mines can also be produced by certain kinds of flies, uh, particularly those flies that are in the family Agromyzidae, the leaf miner fly family. And here we see an adult in the upper left. We see the blotch leaf mine produced by the larva, larvae and uh, an, a larva that has been exposed from a leaf mine with the associated frass. One thing that's a little uh, unique about these leaf mining flies in this family Agromyzidae is that they will uh, insert their eggs into, into leaf tissues with their ovipositor, but they'll also use their ovipositor even more often just to make a wound so that sap will be released, which is what they will feed on. So uh, the, the main thing they feed are, are, is oozing sap that comes from these points where they puncture it. So when you have one of these flies, you'll see a lot of punctures, only a few of which will have had an egg laid in it. And were this to be a small leaf that got punctured, often it, when, it, when it expands, it gets kind of tattered looking. But this is an oviposition wound uh, here. But then the larvae that hatch are leaf miner. And in this case, we're talking about a blotch leaf miner. So we're seeing uh, in the upper left, a uh, columbine that's got uh, the blotched leaf mines in every one of the, the leaves and uh, little white flecks. Those are oviposition wounds, feeding puncture wounds. Holly has several kinds of leaf miners, holly and, and inkberry. Uh, and these are generally of, of a blotch type. There may be uh, some serpentine aspects to it uh, that terminate uh, in a, into a blotch. Uh, so we'll get back to the serpentine a little, a little bit, but uh, it's kind of a mixture. But the, the overall effect is generally that it looks like a big blotch. And this is also one of these leaf mining flies that have adults that will puncture just to get some food, some sap from the plant, uh, uh, from the wound. And they will lay eggs in only a fraction of these puncture wounds. The one kind of leaf mining fly that's fairly important in landscape plants in North America that is not in that family is the boxwood leaf miner. And this is in a, in a different family of the family Cicidomyidae, which is better, better known to make calls on plants. Moving on to beetles, there's a couple of beetles that make blotch leaf mines in the mid-Atlantic states uh, in particular. Black locust is often heavily uh, attacked by uh, this insect, the adults will do a little bit of chewing, indicated in the upper left, uh, of the skeletonizing type. Uh, but then they will in turn lay eggs and the larvae will develop as a, a blotch leaf miner. And that I think is best shown in the, the lower left picture. Uh, sometimes when you have outbreaks, the, the black locusts all look kind of uh, gray or brown as indicated in the picture on the, the right, which I took uh, uh, driving down a highway in New Jersey, I think. Uh, out in this part of the country, the uh, poplar black mine beetle would be the primary one that produces a blotch leaf mine, the primary beetle in, on some of the cottonwoods we have. And in the Midwest, there's a, a kind of weevil that makes a blotch leaf mine called the yellow poplar weevil that is that, that attacks um, uh, yellow poplar or tulip tree. The adults uh, make little kind of crescent irregular uh, uh, punctures in the, the leaf, but they 
then go and, and lay eggs and, and the larvae develop as leaf miners. There's another weevil that also produces two kinds of injuries that are sometimes noticed. Uh, European elm flea weevil. This is a, a non-native insect that has just recently uh, made its way into North America and has, has done really well in some places. It's a tiny little weevil. Uh, it's called a flea weevil because it's tiny, like a flea is tiny, but uh, also they can jump. It's a jumping weevil. So fleas jump, flea weevils jump. Not too many flea weevils. The adults are out early. They chew a little bit on the leaves and their chewing will make little pits in the young leaves that will uh, later be seen as, as little holes, little shot holes. They then lay eggs in the in the uh, in the leaf and the uh, larvae then develop as a leaf miner. It is a serpentine form leaf mine in the beginning and then it terminates as a blotch leaf mine at the leaf edge and the larvae develop within that blotch leaf mine. So there would be a larva in that and then they pupate and emerge as an adult and the adults uh, will then chew on leaves again uh, producing a second cycle of, of little shot hole feeding. This is an insect I, I just think uh, has has had an interesting story uh, uh, where I live. Uh, it was, this insect was unknown from the Western U.S. until 2006, and uh, when we first even knew it was out here, it turned out it was in every county in, in Colorado. And for the next six years, it was incredibly abundant, and all the all the elms were were blotched, leaf mines, and lots of shot holes. And then about 2012, uh, this insect started to tank. Natural enemies uh, uh, were a little slow in catching up, but ultimately they did. And this is now, after a wild ride of about six or seven years, uh, has subsided to become much less uh, common than it formerly was. Okay, finishing up with some blotch leaf mine. Uh, the, the teniform leaf miners are that special type of blotch leaf mine. These are only produced by certain kinds of small moths in a, a, a specific family. And we've got teniform leaf miners around here on cottonwood, apple, crab apple, and hackberry. Elsewhere, other, other hosts are uh, uh, used by teniform type leaf miners. The, the, these caterpillars are, are their, their activity is, is indicated by a couple signs. For, for one thing, uh, when, they're, when they're young, you will see this symptom uh, indicated on the left. Uh, where you, there's little tiny pits. Uh, the, the young stages feed on the sap, uh, kind of bruise it and feed on the, the sap. And uh, so you get little little small spots. Uh, you can see uh, an injury in the, in the lower left picture, although the insect that is shown there is, is actually not the tentiform leaf miner. It looks like it's a parasite that killed one. There is a tentiform leaf miner larva in the picture on the right. As the insects develop, the blotched leaf mine gets larger. And these are caterpillars again. They, these are going to turn into moth, and caterpillars can often produce some silk. And they do. They, they, they tie up the uh, area within the, the blotched leaf mine. And then when the tissues dry out, they pop out a bit like a pup tent. Uh, and, and that's uh, because of the, the way they have tied it together. Uh, so, kind of the tentiform would be like a, pup, a little pup tent kind of kind of injury. Again, just done by this one group of moths. Now, the serpentine form mines are usually produced by either some type of moth or some kind of fly. And uh, these ones here, uh, these serpentine mines that I see around uh, where I live in aspen and poplars, these are produced by larvae of small moths. Uh, another one uh, that is quite common in my own yard is, is one on Virginia creeper, and that is also produced by a small moth. In the picture on the lower right, there's so many that they pretty much have, have uh, uh, consumed most all of the, the internal tissue of that leaf that's indicated. Then there's the leaf miner flies. Uh, uh, we've talked about them as producing blotch mines, but some of them will produce uh, serpentine type of mines too. Again, uh, you'll often see the, the little bit of, of wounding uh, made by the adults before they lay eggs, uh, the wounding to produce uh, feeding uh, uh, wounds that they can feed on the sap. So talked about columbine earlier. Some kind of columbine leaf miners produce blotch leaf mines. Other species produce serpentine type leaf mines. 
uh, a leaf miner that is uh, new to North America and has made its way uh, pretty quickly in many areas is, is one known as the daylily leaf miner. I just happened to notice that in my own yard this last fall. Uh, that's one that is, is found in many areas of North America and its range is expanding quite rapidly. Then finally, there are uh, leaf miners that develop within a needle. And so we would call them a needle miner. And, and these are all small moths. And in the picture in the upper left, I think is the best one that kind of shows that you know, this, this is a, uh, an insect that is developing within the, 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 the tissues of this needle. I think you can see uh, backlit in the center, uh, a little larva there. Uh, and uh, the fact that it is hollow it indicates that it's light. Uh, there, it, there, there's needle mining injuries uh, indicated in the lower left picture too. Now, again, you know that kind of injury that's that's there, where the tip of a, of a conifer uh, needle is brown and the, the base is green. There are many things that can cause that as well, you know, salt or certain pathogens, but they will be hollow. Needles will be hollow, just like leaves have been hollowed out. And that's how you would tell if it was a needle miner. So there would be a, uh, a group of needles here. And the one in the middle, uh, if you look uh, at the base of the brown, you can see a little spot. That's the exit hole made by the insect when it had finished feeding and emerged as a small moth. So here you can see again, backlit the developing stages of larvae and pupae within the needle. And ultimately, they come out, and a small little exit hole will indicate that the insects have left. Again, exit holes. So I think these would be pretty easily distinguished from, again, other things that would cause a, a, the, the tip of some kind of conifer needle to be uh, uh, brown. So management considerations for leaf miners. First of all, leaf mining injuries are mostly cosmetic. Little leaf area is typically affected. Uh, and so it is, it, it is often not all that useful to attempt to control them, uh, particularly since leaf miner outbreaks usually occur in episodes. Uh, most, most species of leaf miners have robust uh, uh, populations of natural enemies that suppress their populations. So, so we will see an outbreak of, of a leaf miner in the following year. Uh, it goes away on its own. Now, there are exceptions. Uh, with some of these introduced leaf miners, uh, the natural enemies are not well uh, established, but, but many of the leaf miners uh, are usually episodic in their, their outbreaks and they resolve themselves. You, you can control them. Insecticidal controls are possible. Uh, primarily, you would do a timing that would target the egg laying period of the insect and systemic insecticides of kinds that could kill that uh, type of insect, a systemic insecticide that would work on the, the kind of leaf miner you have, uh, usually can give uh, superior control because they can penetrate a little bit better to get species that are already developing within the, within the mines. 